Hello and welcome back to Collection Log Completionist, the series that I started over four years ago with the goal of filling in as many slots in the collection log as I can. We've had a lot of amazing, memorable moments in the past and I've had an absolute blast making this series and here we are on the 100th video. So I decided to make it special by making it extra long, over 100 minutes long, in fact, and this uh, took a lot longer than I thought it would and I still have to edit it, so please pray for me. But yeah, I hope you all enjoy this video and thank you all so much for the support over the years. I truly appreciate it more than you could ever know. Okay, so starting things off, we're back at the Whisperer, and the first drop I get back here, 70 battle staves. All right, I'll take that. That's over half a million gold in one drop. See, this is the kind of stuff I like to see. Now, let's go ahead and get some Virtus. Ooh, check that out. New personal best, 219. I wonder if a sub two-minute kill here is possible. I mean, it probably is. The Shadow can max like a 68 or something I think I was hitting. So on a really lucky kill, we might just be able to pull off a sub two minutes. Let's see if I could do that in the next, I don't know, 400 kills, <laughs> however long I'm going to be here. 50 kills into the Whisperer. I'm really liking this boss, honestly. The best part about it is if you play smart, and especially if you prayer flick, you can get an insane amount of kills per trip. This was like, uh, I don't know, at least an 8 or 9 kill trip. It was so good. I just bring in like 10 super restores with me. I prayer flick occasionally, and I just get to stay here like forever. Hey, there's another Awakener's Orb at 63. Just saying... I've gotten four Awakener's Orbs from the Whisperer in 63. I think that's the same amount that I got from Vardorvis in almost 500. So, uh, you know, I'm not confirming anything, but Whisperer is OP. But it's so beautiful. Seven Dragon Plate Skirts. What the heck? And they're not even noted. They're just all sitting there on the ground. What in the heck is that? That is a very weird one. Also, I did not get the perfect kill amount, which is 10. I don't really know what I did wrong. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing that's not giving me the perfect kill because I didn't take any damage and I didn't mess up any of the special attacks. So I'm really not sure. With Vardorvis, as long as you avoided the axes, the spikes, and his melee attack, you would always get double loot or 50% more loot. But with this boss, sometimes it seems a little random to me. I'm not sure. I also really quickly just want to talk about something ironic. Before this content came out, a lot of people thought the Bellator ring would be useless. That's the ring that gives 20 slash bonus and 4 strength as opposed to the Ultor range, which just, just gives 12 strength. So the Bellator is more of an accuracy-focused ring. A lot of people said it was going to be useless, but as of right now, it is the most expensive ring selling right now. It's best in slot at two of the new bosses and might be best in slot at some Theater of Blood bosses. So I'm not trying to say I told you so, but I told you so. And we've just hit over 100 kill count at the Whisperer. Also, I did some research looking around. I don't think anybody can figure out how you get the perfect kill on the Whisperer. Maybe it's bugged. I don't know. Ah, uh, yes. The Fabled drop once again, except I got it so early this trip that I don't even have inventory space for it. Seven Dragon Blade Skirts. I don't know why they didn't note these. They really thought they were being funny, and I gotta be honest, they kind of were. Dude, I am so upset. I'm so upset. I just lost 2 million gold because I wasn't thinking. Oh my god, I empty brain hit 1 instead of 2 to use the Awakener's Orb. That's so upsetting, dude. Why? Can you just make it so you have to use the orb on the boss to do it? Please. Okay, I just had to show this drop. We just got insanely spooned. Only 160 kill count and we got the bronze long swords. Let's go. Another Awakener's Orb at, uh, what is this, 197. Also, it looks like they went up to 3 mil. I'm really glad I didn't sell them yesterday. They're getting more expensive. Holding is the play, at least with these. All the other rings, they've, they've, they've crashed dramatically. So holding was not the play. Then I'm really glad I sold that old door ring. Oh, wait, I just realized we passed over 200 kills at this boss. I still haven't found out how to get a perfect kill. I've looked everywhere, you know, Reddit, Twitter, I've submitted bug reports. I just don't think it's possible. But I have still seen people getting the unique drops from these bosses. So I think it's okay to keep grinding Whisperer. And I'm having a pretty good time doing so still. And I'm also very curious what the actual drop rates of the items are from here. Because I have not seen many people with Virtus drops. But I have seen a couple people finally getting their ring drops. So I'm assuming Virtus is extremely rare since you can get each piece from every boss. And maybe the ingot and... And the ring are more common. The axe piece, I have no idea though, because I've seen some people getting spooned the axe piece on like 20 kill count, and then I see some people with a thousand kills with no axe piece, so we'll see. Oh baby, that is what I'm talking about. 223 kills for the Virtus 
robe bottom we got to get out of here we got to go sell this thing before it crashes anymore oh yeah this is why you grind stuff on release y'all this is why you don't just do it once or twice and go tee hee that was fun no you gotta you gotta fully commit all right because you can get cool pants like these check these pants out oh oh they look so good they'd look much better if i had the full set they kind of look a little goofy with ancestral but just like cover your screen a little bit to pretend the top of my character is in there and oh they match really well with the Eternal Boots as well. Oh my god, those are great. Time to get rid of them, because unfortunately this is a main account, and I just get to go buy everything with golden pieces. Well, the price has been going down on these pretty hard, unfortunately. Just earlier today, actually, it was 40 mil, and now it's down to 31 mil, so it's a good thing to just sell this as quick as you can. We got, well, we got exactly 31, then the GE tax stole my hopes and dreams, so we only got 30 0.6 mil, which is still really good. And the nicest thing about this is not even in my Whisperer log. It's that my Vardorvis log is looking even juicier. Look at that right next to the Ultor Vestige, too. So I think the next unique is going to be the Virtus Robe Top. Then we'll get the Mask. And then we'll have to come back to Vardorvis for the Axe Head because I just can't resist. I want to fill one of these collection log slots or one of these collection log sections up so bad. See one of these new bosses green? Mm. Also, I'm just going to go ahead and say this anecdotal evidence completely confirms my theory that the uh, Whisperer has better unique drop rate chances. You know, only 223 for a piece of Virtus. I surely could not be lucky. That's just what it is. And I think I'm probably two out of three on the Vestige as well. You're going to see that very soon. Just Vestige pop up, like next clip. Oh, yeah, baby. 244 kill count, new log slot, the Shadow Quartz. Awesome, dude. I was wondering when we were going to get that. Uh, yeah, 244 kills for that. Not bad. There's the next gem for our ancient scepter. We'll go attach that next time we go to the bank, which will be a while, of course, because these trips last forever. I mean, just look at how much loot's in my inventory. I actually love that part of this boss. Real quick, let's talk about the sponsor that's made this video possible, Factor. I've been vouching for Factor for a while, and that's because they're just great. They deliver chef-prepared, ready-in-two-minutes-or-less meals straight to your door. They're made with only fresh ingredients and help you achieve your fitness and wellness goals with their dietitian approved nutrition. For instance, the Factor meal I made today had 40 grams of protein in it, which helped keep me full and satisfied. Plus, it was absolutely delicious. Since these meals are so quick to make, they're really convenient for anyone with a busy lifestyle and for those of us that just want that extra hour on RuneScape after work. The fact that they're so delicious and quick also helps keep me from ordering food or going out, which is super expensive nowadays, and let's be honest, fast food is the opposite of healthy. Their menu variety is fantastic, with a rotating weekly menu of 34 plus meal options and 36 add-ons, such as these delicious juices they sent me. Speaking of delicious, I just want to take a second to say that the filet mignon with kale mashed potatoes was truly amazing. I felt like I was eating at a fancy restaurant. So use my link or go to go.factor75.com and use code POGGUIDESEP50 for 50% off your first box. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone. Thank you so much to Factor, not only for keeping the channel running, but for sending me and my family this delicious food. Let's get back to the video. Here we go. I just had to get three more ancient scepters because I just didn't have enough to do this. So let's use the shadow quartz on our next ancient scepter. And we have created the shadow ancient scepter. Let's see how this one looks. Looks pretty cool with the black gem in there. I really do like it. And its bonus is, of course, 10% more powerful ancient magics. And it increases the lowering effect of shadow spells so it lowers their attack strength and defense levels even more than it used to i don't know if this thing will ever be useful maybe somebody will find some niche use for it and that'll be pretty cool but until then it's just a cool fashion so uh this is not financial advice but i am definitely a stonks expert in runescape and i think this is the peak time to sell our awakeners orbs they're going for just over 3.3 mil so we're going to dump the stack in there and claim our beautiful 19.8 million gold from that yeah i feel like they're just going to gradually go down over time from this point but as long as they stay over one or two mil they're going to be a really nice random drop from these bosses also look at how nasty our cash stack is looking almost 700 mil i'm super tempted to try to buy that magic ring uh to keep grinding whisperer with but it's still like over 100 mil and i know it's just going to keep going down i don't want to hurt myself like that uh what <laughs> All right, we're a little bit lucky. I will concede we're a little bit lucky. There's the Virtus Mask on 298. Wow, these bosses have been way too kind to me so far. Virtus Mask and Robe Bottom, both from Whisperer so far. Insanely lucky, especially considering they just put out the estimated drop rates on the wiki. And it seems like for any piece of Virtus from Whisperer, it's like 1 in 600 or so. So, yeah, 
pretty lucky on that so far. Although it just seems like every time I've rolled the drop table, I've rolled Virtus, which is just, you know, it's RNG. It's a weird thing. Also, we're not going to talk about how lucky I got at Vardorvis. I know a lot of you have already typed out comments, considering the drop rate from there is a little bit higher than the, like, 450 that I got the item at. Okay, I know. I know, I was a little lucky. And there's 300 kills of the Whisper. I'm still having a ton of fun at this boss. It's very engaging. Like, there's not a single part of this fight where it's, like, so slow that you start to lose your attention. And I really like that. Pretty much every boss fight from Desert Treasure 2 is like that. And it's just great. This is amazing boss design. I don't know anybody who's not enjoying any of these bosses. Well, some people don't like preparing the potions at Duke. Also, not to talk about drop rates too much, but if my math is correct, that means that you should hit the unique table for Whisperer once every 77 kills. And that means we should have hit the unique table four times so far. And all we've gotten so far from this boss is two pieces of Virtus. Which means if we're on right, then we've gotten two rolls for the ring. Which means we could get the ring at any time. Just with the ring, like assuming this boss drops nothing else but just the ring, it's like 9 million gold per hour. So uh, I'm going to stay here for a while. I think even if I get the ring, I might stay here for even longer because I'm really enjoying this boss. The pet rate's like 1 in 2,000 and it's a super cool pet. Plus, like, the money is just stupid, and I really need money for more implings and better gear and such. Oh my gosh, Awakened Reserves are almost 4 mil? I wish I'd held on to mine from yesterday, dang. I mean, it's only like half a mil loss per orb, but still, wow, that's really nice. Also, these orbs drop from this boss at a rate of 1 in 34, so this is like over 100k per kill just from the orbs as well. My guy, if you were not grinding these bosses right now, I don't know what you're doing. Hey, check it out. The Virtus Mask sold for 14.5 mil. That's really good. But not only that, I've done something a little naughty. I've splurged. I did it. I know. I splurged. We're buying the Magus Ring. Magus Ring. Magus Ring. Somebody figure out how you pronounce this. Anyways, this thing is absolutely nuts okay so right now i've been using the light bearer because i actually don't have an upgraded sears ring now i don't want to talk about it so this magus ring is slightly better than the sears ring but it has a massive advantage in that it gives a plus two percent magic damage percentage which no other ring has ever given magic damage percentage and as you can see on the accuracy front it gives plus 15 magic now that's with normal magic weapons. This shadow here is not a normal magic weapon. It's the most disgusting thing that ever has ever been created on this planet. So we equip the Magus Ring, and our magic damage goes from 69% to 75. That's a 6% buff. That's like two pieces of Ancestral or something. Stupid. And look at the magic accuracy from 447 to 492. Is that a 45 accuracy increase? Stupid absolutely stupid so this thing should be nuts at whisperer and i almost wish i'd bought it earlier but uh yeah i assume we're gonna be able to get some fat pbs with this i think that strength bonus is gonna give us three max hits with the shadow you know not only that but it'll actually increase the accuracy of my accursed scepter special attack too which means i'll miss this less so i won't really notice that i don't have the light bearer because it should only take me one spec every single kill now uh i do not even need to look at this to know this is a fat pb it's not a fat PB, but it was one second off my PB. That kill was disgusting. Now, I know, anecdotal, it was only one kill, but that felt good. I don't think I missed a single attack that entire kill, whereas before, I was splashing a decent bit. So, we're a good ways into this trip, and I feel like it's a good time to talk about my thoughts on the Ring of Magus? Magus? I don't know what to call it still, but I will say that it doesn't sound like it's a huge upgrade, but this thing is a nuts upgrade. It brings my max hit from 64 up to 66 with the shadow. The accuracy buff is absolutely ridiculous. I just never miss, basically. I miss maybe like one attack per kill, whereas before I was missing at least three, four, or five per kill. Uh, the special attack of the start misses maybe once every 10 kills or something. And if you'll notice, these kills are speeding up such a considerable amount that look how many supplies I have left in my inventory, even though I've done a good amount of kills this trip. So yeah, this ring is amazing. It also brings up my max hit with Barrage from a 34 to a 36, or maybe it was a 35. I don't know. It does up my max hit with Barrage, though, which is pretty nice. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to say, I think this was a worthwhile purchase. If we stop grinding Whisper, I'll probably sell it back, at least for the time being. But I don't know, man. This seems worth it to me. So here's the loot from our Whisperer trip, almost 1.5 mil. That's not including the three Awakeners orbs we got which are worth 10.8 mil, so I really don't know what people are talking about saying these bosses are bad GP per hour or something, or the drop rates are too extreme. Dude, if you just do these a little bit at a time, average it out over time, you're going to be rich. 
Oh my god, wait. Yes! We're so lucky at this boss, dude. There is the axe piece, the siren staff. You are kidding me, dude. You're kidding me. We're getting so lucky at this boss, dude. Oh my goodness. All we're missing that's unique from this boss is the vestige and the pet. I mean the pet, of course, obviously. But wow! 344, we've gotten the robe bottom, the mask, and the axe piece. Holy smokes, dude. Okay. I'm loving this new update, not gonna lie. And also, if the Soul Reaper Axe is maintaining its price, this thing is worth a lot of money if I could just get the other three pieces, okay? Alright, yeah, the Soul Reaper is worth 1.5 billion. So, technically, this drop right here is worth like 350 mil. Now, of course, it's not gonna be worth that by the time I actually build an axe. I'm gonna be lucky if it's worth like 200 mil by the time I build an axe. But maybe we'll just get so spooned and this will be the greatest runescape video of all time all right there's shadow quartz number two there we go i really wish i knew if there was some kind of use to the duplicates because these are just going to be like a ooh, because it gives a little jingle when you get them it goes -da 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 -ding, but like this is nothing and a dramatic 400 kill count at the whisperer if the drop rates are correct that means we're a fifth of the way to the pet which is really exciting because I do like this pet quite a lot. I want this one and Leviathan the most. Those are some of the coolest looking pets in the game. And uh, it's going pretty well still. I feel like I've said this a hundred times, but this boss fight's pretty fun. And the Magus Magus, I still don't know how to say it. The Mage Ring is helping a lot. Oh my god, I didn't even notice. Apparently at some point we got a PB. We beat our old personal best of 214. It's 213 now. Look at how overpowered this thing is. It's nuts. Okay, hold it. Something important just happened. I didn't even notice it until I just finished banking. But our personal best has gone from a 213 to a 212. Write it on the walls, folks. We are gaming. So every single boss has now had its drop rates buffed for Desert Treasure 2 by like 20 to 30% for each boss. And something important has happened. They finally added the Awakener's Orb to the collection log which is great now only one thing is missing and that's the blood torva recolor that you get for doing all of the hard mode versions of the bosses so once they add that i will probably actually go for that even though it looks insanely difficult it took a lot of really good pvm just like eight to ten hours to finish a little bit scary a little bit intimidating and i know it's going to hurt the bank but it'll be really fun to accomplish uh yeah and they also released the official drop rates so the new drop rate for this ring is one in five twelve which we're almost at the drop rate for but of course all of these kills were before the buff but yeah looking at the new drop rates it looks like you have like a one in three hour chance to hit the unique table here at uh whisperer which is pretty dang good so i think i'm going to keep grinding this even though all the ring prices are crashing into the ground Oh my, oh my goodness, we got uh, the Awakener's Orb collection log slot, finally, after 499 kills. Ma man, we were so dry on that. Actually, they just, they just forgot to add this to the collection log, but they added it today. So, yay, new log slot. Uh, it's not the most exhilarating one, but it still makes that number go up by one, which just feels so good. Okay, back to back Awakener's Orbs. We're just that good at the game, if I'm being honest. And there's also 500 kills at Whisperer. We're only 12 kills away from the new drop rate for the ring, but because we did most of our kills before this, that doesn't really mean much. But that's okay, because now we get the improved rates, and the ring's worth, like, a lot less. But, you know, that means you get more rings, so I don't really know if, on average, this will hurt the boss's money per hour. I haven't run the numbers, and I'm not going to. That was an insanely good last trip. Lots of good loot in the inventory, plus four Awakener's Orbs. That's 10 million gold just in the orbs in one trip. Oh my god, I'm loving these bosses so much. Like, we're already back up to nearly a 600 mil cash stack after overpaying for this beautiful ring. Oh, yes! Look at it! 533 kill count, Bellator, Visage. Yes, dude! That's so awesome. That means we have completely finished Whisperer. Uh, all we need is the pet, so we'll come back for that eventually. We're already over a quarter of the way to the pet, which is just awesome. That's two out of three rings, baby. Let's go. Only 533. Uh, even though that is slightly above the new drop rate, Still pretty darn lucky when you consider the old drop rate was like 1 in 620 or something like that. Anyways, I'm not complaining. Let's go ahead and buy the warrior ring that we need to upgrade this in three chromium ingots. Now, I know <laughs> the warrior ring's probably pretty expensive, so I don't know if I can afford it. Here we are once again at the Edgeville Furnace with our warrior icon and our Bellator vestige. Let's combine them together to get the Bellator icon and then go up to here. 
I don't have a ring mold. This is so embarrassing. Oh my goodness. Go up to here with the ring mold, and I think this is everything we need. Yes, craft a Bellator ring. Oh yeah, look at this bad boy. This thing's actually pretty nuts. A lot of people said this wasn't going to be that good, but I was banking on the fact that I think this ring might actually be insanely good at some places, whereas the Ultor ring gives 12 strength. This one only gives 4 strength, but it gives a 20 slash accuracy bonus, which might not sound like a lot, but I promise 20 is absolutely massive. So anyways, let's head to the Grand Exchange, see how much this is selling for, because I don't think these ring prices are going to Hold. They're just going to keep going down for a little while. I went ahead and sold some of the normal loot as well, and the Bellator has finally gone through for 214 mil. Oh, that's so juicy. So let's grab the 211 mil out of there, add it to the cash stack, and so far we're looking at 835 mil. I don't remember what we started at before this, but I'm pretty sure it was not that much money. So we've probably made almost 800 million gold so far. Just from this update, so yeah, I'm really liking Desert Treasure 2, you guys. It's it's pretty good. So I've moved on to starting to grind the Leviathan. We're at a very nice kill count here, and I've been using the Bofa setup, which is good, but the problem is it's so inconsistent. My personal best is 142, which was a great kill, and I usually get kills from two to two and a half minutes, but sometimes they just drag on to like three minutes long. And so I think I really want to spend a little bit of our 800 mil cash stack that we've earned on a Xerite crossbow. This thing is useful in a ton of places, not just here. So I think this will be a good investment and I'll try really hard to resist selling it back to buy other gear. But I'm pretty sure this is best in slot here, especially because the Leviathan has like 900 health. And so Ruby Bolts will just hit constant 110s on it, which is going to be amazing. Not to mention that the Xerite crossbow has absolutely ridiculously high accuracy, especially when comboed with the Buckler. And yeah, I'll let you guys know how it goes. I'm not sure if I'm going to use the special attack. It uses 75% of your spec bar and guarantees an enchanted bolt activation. So it's like a guaranteed 110 damage spec. But I kind of like using the web weaver in the final phase because it just makes it so easy. So we'll see. I'll do a little experimenting. Okay, this was a nasty PB. 126. I had three ruby bolts in a row. To be fair, one of them was the special attack, but oh my gosh, that was juicy. That's like a 20 second PB nearly. Oh my gosh. Yeah, needless to say, we're not too many kills in with the ZCB, but I like it. Uh, this kill was stupid. What was this? 116, another PB. Okay. Okay, listen, if you've been on the fence about the ZCB, Get off the fence, dude. Just just get off of it. This thing is stupid. It is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, snap the smoke quartz on 78. That's pretty lucky. I think these things are like 1 in 200. I will gladly take that. There is our third out of fourth gem from the new bosses. Man, we are just rolling in collection log slots over the past week or so. This is absolutely awesome. I seriously stand by my uh, statement that Desert Treasure 2 is one of the best updates to ever come out for this game. It is just god tier. And as is tradition, it's time to attach the smoke quartz to our ancient scepter to make the smoke ancient scepter. This one does something with poison. I don't know. I'm not even going to look it up because I know it's not that useful. Unless, like I said, maybe some crazy mad lad will actually find a use for this thing. That would be amazing. If you can do it, please leave a comment. I want to hear what this thing is useful for. And there's 100 KC at the Leviathan. Wow, this weapon is so much better. I'm estimating that my kills went from like 20 per hour with the Bofa to over 25 per hour with this thing. So 20% increase in kills per hour is nothing to scoff at. And I've found that my trips are also a lot longer with the ZCB. I'm just feeling much more consistent with it. So I'm like getting in the groove of killing it and everything's smoothing over very well. Now I've picked up a couple of tips along the way, such as you don't actually want to heal up after your kill unless you're insanely low health, because look, those Ruby Bolt specs, as you can see, which I'm getting very lucky off of, they hit you for 10% of whatever your current HP is, not your max HP. So if you're only like 40 HP at the end of the kill and you use the ZCB spec at the start, you'll only take a four as opposed to a nine if you were full health. So it's just little stuff like that that helps out over the kill. And yeah, I'm hoping by 700 kills or whenever we get the vestige, I picked up even more strats. Yeah, look at this trip. Our divine ranging pot is about to be completely finished, all the way from a four dose to a no dose, which is pretty darn good trip length, in my opinion. Wait, 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 what? <laughs> no way. If only the people in the CC knew how few kills I had at this boss. I actually just picked up the loot because I had no 
semblance of an idea in my head that we could get any unique this early. Wow. 144 kills for the vest. That is stupid. I don't I don't have another word for that. That is stupid. I don't I don't know if you understand exactly how lucky this is to get this vestige. You have to roll the unique table, which is one in 96. So at this drop rate, we should have only rolled the unique table once, okay? And once you roll the unique table, you have to hit the 3 out of 8 chance to get the ring. And then you have to do that 3 times in total. So we rolled the unique table 3 times in 140 kills. And every single roll hit the ring. That's disgusting. What? Well, after getting roasted by the CC for being the biggest spoon on planet Earth, we're here at the Edgeville Furnace once again. We are going to chisel down our archer's ring. Just break that down. Attach the visage or vestige. And nobody knows what this thing is called. And I also forgot the blood runes, which I have done every single time, I think. So maybe we'll remember them for the uh, last one. Probably not. Let's combine these bad boys. What is that, dude? It looks like a little... I don't I don't even know. I'm not I'm not going to make a joke. I have no idea what that looks like. Create the Venator ring. Look at this beautiful thing. You see it on my hand? No, because RuneScape characters do not actually have fingers, which is pretty creepy if you think about it. But yeah, this bad boy is a pretty nuts item. So as you can see, it gives plus uh what is that? 10 accuracy for ranged, which is only a 2 upgrade over the ranger, the ranger, <laughs> the archer's ring. I don't know how I forgot that, but look at the range strength. It goes from 147 to 149, which sounds like the most minimal thing ever. I promise it's not the most minimal thing ever. Any range strength buff makes weapons like the blowpipe and the twisted bow so much more powerful. It's not even funny. Just one max hit on the blowpipe increases that thing's DPS exponentially. And then of course the twisted bow, you give like half a range strength and it gains 12 max hits. So I'm sure this ring is really good. But I'm not using it right now because they're still really expensive. So let's go sell it and get some money. All right, just logged back in. Did the ring sell while I was gone? Yes, 115. Well, we got taxed. So more like 113 mil. But that is still huge. Look at the cash stack. We're at half a bill still. And we bought this uh, Zerite crossbow for like 400 mil. So in the past week and a half or so, I have legit made 900 million gold. That's disgusting and makes me incredibly happy. And also, I want to say that the reason I've been getting so lucky is probably because Jagex remembered it's my birthday this week. So it's just a big birthday present to me. It has nothing to do with the fact that I'm insanely spooned. Okay, so I was looking at my bank and it said I had 9 billion gold worth of value. And I was just like, what? That doesn't make any sense. I do not have 9 bill. And then I looked in here and look at the eyes of Newt. I don't know what happened. But for some reason, they're selling for 18 gold each, at least on the GE here. So it says that this 168 million stack of Eyes of Newt is actually worth 3 billion gold right now. So I'm going to try to buy an Eye of Newt and see if they're actually going for that much. Because if so, we've surpassed a long-term goal of mine of reaching max cash worth of Eyes of Newt. So they are, they're selling for 20 gold each right now. Wow. So I could actually sell these for over 3 billion gold, but I'm not going to do that because this Eye of Newt stack means more to me than any amount of money. Well, this might be a massive mistake, honestly, but I'm going to buy a Bellator ring. It's going to cost almost 200 mil. Wow. It's actually more than that. Okay. Whoo, mama, this is going to be painful. Uh, I'm going to buy this because it is best in slot at both Fardorvis and Duke. And Duke is the boss that I am about to go grind right now to see if we can knock out our final vestige. And then, of course, I might even keep grinding these bosses because they are just so fun to try to get the Soul Reaper Axe, which is still holding its value at about 600 million gold. Now, of course, we do only have one piece of the Soul Reaper Axe, and that is the one from Whisperer. But, I mean, it's the same drop rate as the Vestige, so, of course, maybe we could get lucky and get that, too. Oh, God. Okay, there we go. It costs almost 180 mil to buy this ring. And the reason it's so good at this boss is because it has pretty high defense, and the Bellator does give a juicy 20 slash accuracy. So, I'm hoping that, combined with the BGS, will make Duke basically into a giant squishy marshmallow. Well, I think that Duke PB is going to be hard to beat. There is a 134... That's pretty fast. I mean, usually you don't kill the boss that fast. It's like a two to two and a half minute kill on average for me, at least so far. We're only 35 kills in, so maybe I'll get better as we go on. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not enjoying this boss as much as the others. Maybe that's just because I haven't found my flow yet. But mostly I'm just so annoyed by these little shadow spots that pop up during the prep phase. I hate them with all of my heart. 
And I yes, that's because I keep running onto them because I'm not paying attention. Also, check this out. Tick Manip to pick two mushrooms at once. Also, in case you're wondering what the light bearer is for, I equip it when I start doing the uh, prep phase here so that we can regen double the special attack energy we normally would while we're uh, doing this part of the fight because you don't really need DPS when you're just picking mushrooms. Oh boy, it happened. Seven dragon plate legs. I don't have the inventory space for this. Wait, why'd I pick these up? I need the mushrooms. Oh my, what are you supposed to do when you get this drop? Do you just leave? What? What? What is this? <laughs> yeah, okay, I guess I'm just banking. The, this drop just says, go bank, okay? This trip is over. Get out of here. I mean, it's a million gold, though, so I mean, I will happily bank. Oh, I just noticed we passed over 100 kills at Duke in time for my controversial opinion. I don't really like this boss that much. I think it's just a little bit boring. And I also really don't like those stupid poison vents that give you no indication they're coming. You just have to stand there and wait for like four to five seconds doing nothing. And my brain doesn't like sitting there doing nothing, so it makes me unhappy. Okay, okay, just one more hot take. Why does everyone say the BGS is the best weapon here? I, ge I genuinely have maybe a 10% hit rate with it. It misses almost every single kill. I have no idea why I even bring this thing. Okay, just disregard every clip before this because Jagex woke up today and chose peace and love. They did not choose violence. They fixed Duke. They made it so that the events at the start of the kill are completely predictable. So if you do the kill the same way every time, the events are going to spawn the same way every time. So if you plan around it, you could just have a rotation that makes sense. You don't have to stand there anymore. You don't have to wonder if you're going to get poison vented and have your perfect kill ruined. However, they did make it so those little shadow strikes at the start do ruin your perfect kill, which I actually love because it makes me want to pay attention to them since they didn't ruin the perfect kill before i kind of just ran in and didn't think and if i got hit by them you know it is what it is but i like that now i have to pay a little bit more attention so you know what i might actually like duke now and also i got a new pb of one minute 30 seconds so that's pretty cool uh just the boost i needed seven dragon plate legs you know i will take this things like this they just make my day a little bit better which i really needed i've been having a rough one today so thank you game okay okay like three kills later or something we get this drop again all right all right i get it you don't want me to do long trips one kill trips it is all right fine oh my goodness look at that we did it the ice courts at 157 that is our ice courts collection completed as one might say and that means that we have all of the gems from all of the bosses from desert treasure 2 which is pretty cool and now we're only missing the one ring as well so we're really just blasting through these collection logs let's go back to the bank and make the ice scepter all right here we go let's use the ice quartz on the ancient scepter and create the ice ancient scepter i wish it was just called the ice scepter i don't know it's got to be the ice ancient scepter so it's just a bit of a mouthful but hey this one looks pretty good i really like the way that gem looks and this one is pretty useful for pking i think it gives you like a 10 percent higher accuracy on unfrozen targets which is pretty decent and it might extend the freeze duration maybe that's just a base effect of the ancient scepter i can't remember but it's actually pretty good and if we go in our bank actually and grab out the duplicate quartz that we've gotten two blood quartz and a shadow quartz and then we go ahead down to the ancient vault. There should be a new chest down here that you can use these on, actually, to get another loot roll and a little bit of money. Ah, here it is over here, a chest that they have added. Looks like a gem could fit inside the lock. And it's just for dupes that you don't want. And there's really no reason to hold on to these dupes as far as I know. So let's go ahead and unlock it with the shadow quartz first. What do we get? 20 rune ore. I mean, that's pretty decent. All right, the blood quartz, 100 dragon dart tips. And then we get 100 tuna potatoes. Yeah, that's like the troll drop, isn't it? That's not very useful. But 100 dart tips and 20 runite ore is pretty decent. So let's see how much cash we got from trading those bad boys in. Eh, 450k for some extra drops that we don't really need anymore. That's not bad. Wait, you're not ready for this. You're just not. I know you're probably sitting down, but you need to sit down harder because our personal best went from 1 minute 30 seconds to 1 minute 29 seconds so we just passed over 400 kill count here at the dookie boy which uh, is really unfortunate because i've still not received a single unique drop now i could say copium and that means that i'm probably at two out of four or two out of three on the ring drop but uh we all know that that is uh it's really up in the air, but not seeing anything from this boss in 400 does kind of suck. It's one in 90, so we should have seen four drops by now, but, you know, it's okay. We'll keep at it, I guess. I'm not really enjoying Duke as much as the other bosses, but we'll keep going. Okay, I think I need to take a break from Duke. I keep dying because I just can't focus because I'm just not having fun at this boss. You know, you get too complacent, and you just, like, zone in or zone out, rather, and then you just die because you're doing really stupid things like walking into his ice barrage attack. That hits, I'm pretty sure, guaranteed 90s. I don't think it works like other attacks, because I don't think that's ever hit me for less than a 96 before. I don't want to talk about it. It's really sad. Well, I guess it's time to announce that we're back at Vardy Boy. 
because I just got a Blood Quartz again, which is like super cool and amazing. And that means I get to turn it into the chest later and get some loot, which is probably going to be more Blood Runes. That's my prediction. Write it down now, and later you're going to go, wow, I can't believe he called it. That was so freaking cool. Where's that chest that's right here? Let's put our Blood Quartz into it. And there it is, 500 Blood Runes, just like I said. Bow down. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Did we... Yeah, we just passed over 500 kills at Vardorvis, which is not very impressive, really, but it's something. All right, that means we're one-sixth of the way to the pet, and I actually want this pet. This pet looks pretty cool. Hey, there we go. I was due one of these for a long time, a chromium ingot. That's our second one. We've gotten three vestiges, and we've finally achieved chromium ingot number two. What a huge accomplishment this is for me, and uh, yeah, they're really worth only 300k. That is horrible, dude. Oh my gosh, my heart is broken and my day is ruined. No, I'm just kidding. It's 300k. I'll take it. Woohoo! 600 of our Dorvis, and I swear to God, it feels like I get the supply drop almost every single kill. I know it's like the same as all the other bosses' supply drops, but it just feels that much more common. I don't know if it's because you kill Vardorvis so fast, but it's totally painful. Anyway, 600. We'll beat 1,000, like, tomorrow, probably. And we've reached the Satan kill count, unfortunately. We are not blessed on this day. We got Runite Ore, though. I mean, that I guess that is pretty good. Oh, wait, wait. I definitely didn't miss it because I was zoned out. 700 kills at Vardorvis. Oh, yeah. 500 more Blood Runes. I mean, we got the Blood Quartz again at 723. Mark it on your calendars, folks. In just 10 minutes, we're heading back to the Ancient Vault, and we're turning this bad boy in, and we're going to get some really really nifty blood runes or maybe something else i actually don't even know if you can get anything else from the blood courts i think i got blood runes every single time didn't i okay i just looked it up apparently there's a lot of things you can get from here not just blood runes nope i was wrong it's it's actually just blood runes i don't know if you all knew this okay okay it's evening out we knew it would happen eventually another chromium ingot as they call them and uh you know it's a little disappointing to see these because they're just so cheap look at the it's gone down since i got my last one by like 30k and i haven't even sold the last one. Oh my god why did they add these as a drop i still have no idea why these silly ingots are in the game they're so dumb oops i missed recording it not only did we get an awakener zord but we also hit 805 kill count yeah i missed the 800 kill count don't don't bully me, all right? It's hard to pay attention during this boss. It's really intense, and I just want to sit here and focus while I'm killing it. But yeah, I think we're going to go up to the Axe Piece drop rate and then stop there. I was thinking about grinding out another Ultor ring, but honestly, I don't want to force myself to stay at any boss like I did when Desert Treasure 2 first came out. I just found that to burn me out too quick. Even if I was still enjoying the boss, in the back of my head, I'm always thinking, ugh, what if I roll this? What if it takes forever to roll the ring? Like, I, I don't want to bother with that. I remembered this time. Be proud of me. There's nine. 100 kill count at Vardorvis. Oh my gosh, I feel like I've been at this boss for so long. Like, I'm getting like 30 kills per hour when I'm full focused and not dying, which, which I totally never die here. I mean, I'm like so good at this boss, definitely. Definitely don't ask me to check the scoreboard outside the boss. You know, I have a severe love-hate relationship with these supply drops. They're so good when you get them in the middle of a trip. You're running low on supplies, and they help you eke out one or two extra kills. But I almost always get them like this. Back to back to back. I just get, like, three of them in a row. And then I just have too many supplies. And then I'm just... Yeah, it's just eh. I am so upset right now, and I don't have shadow play on, so I can't prove it to you. But I was in my POH. I healed up at my pool. I right-clicked my cape, clicked Crafting Guild, and the same tick that I teleported to the Crafting Guild, a Quizmaster appeared, and then he disappeared when I arrived here. I'm, I'm so upset right now. Jagex, please, can you please make them not disappear next to deposit boxes? I'm, I'm, I'm about to cry. Uh, that's weird. I just got back-to-back -back Awakener orbs at Vardorvis. What, what, what are the odds of that? Hey, Sh Shelby, run the numbers. It's a measly 1 in 6,400. Okay, that's not too bad. I thought it was going to be more rare than that, but I wasn't, you know, I didn't really think it out before I started talking. But hey, 1 in 6,400, Lady Luck is with us today, and that's why in 28 kills, we are going to get the Soul Reaper Axe piece and the Butch Pet, same kill. It's going to be beautiful. Oh, wait, I didn't, I didn't record it when I picked it up because I just spam clicked the loot. Look, another Blood Quartz. I told you, Lady Luck is with us today. We're just getting everything. It is, it's kind of feeling nice, especially because my car broke down yesterday, it's in the shop now, I'm a little, a little broken hearted about that, but that's okay, it's all going to be made up today, we're going to hit a thousand kill count at Vard, and I'll finally have purpose again. Oh boy, here it is, one thousand kills at Vardorvis, I think this is, this is easily the most I've killed a boss 
this close to its release like ever. This is a good boss. If you all haven't killed it, I highly recommend it. It's pretty, it's pretty quirky. It's pretty fun. It's a good time, in my opinion. And uh, you don't really need great gear to do it, honestly. You could literally have, like, I don't know, some friggin' bandos and a fang, and you're pretty much 90% of the way there. I mean, this best in slot obviously helps out with max hits a lot, but you really don't need that much accuracy at this boss if you have the thing. This thing carries. So, yeah. I think I might go to the drop rate of the Axe Head, which is like 1,080 or something like that. I don't really expect to get it because, you know, drop rates are finicky. But I definitely want to leave this boss. I'm having fun, and I don't want that to stop. And if I stay too long, I'm going to get burned out. Well, I decided I'd go back to my favorite place on Earth, the Wilderness. Especially because Dead Man mode's going on right now, so maybe there's less PKers. And plus, look at that. We're actually only one log slot away from 1250. I did not notice that until just now, which would be awesome. I just got a, what is it, a spider task. Couldn't remember the word for spider, don't judge me. We still need the fangs of Venonatus and the pet, which, you know, 1,100 kills before the rework, kind of a flex. I just stood in the safe spot and killed it for all those kills. But yeah, I haven't killed this boss in like a month or two, so I'm, I'm pretty sure you just smack it with the Earth and Chain Mace and it dies. I, I, I think that's how you do this. Okay, fine. This is the real reason I'm here is for elite clues, obviously. Who cares about actual loot? Or collection log slots. It's all about the elite clues, baby. One in 50 from these bad boys. I actually do want to try and get the elite clue stack to 100 and open it in this video. We are almost halfway there, I believe. I think we're at like 40-something. Let's check it real quick. 47. So yeah, we're almost halfway there. Uh, 53 elite clues to go. That is actually going to take a while. Oh boy, my favorite time of the day. Kill count milestones. 800 at Spindle. And, uh, yeah, my memory did serve me correctly. You do just, you just click on the boss with the Ursin Chain Mace and it dies. Now, you do get to throw darts at the little baby spiders, which is fun. But, yeah, I actually do really like this boss. It's pretty, it's pretty chill. I kind of want to just stay here after the task. That's how I feel every time I do these wildy things. I'm like, oh, I actually want to stay here and grind the boss. And then it takes forever, and then I get a Revenant's task, and then I get sad, and then I give up. So that was a little weird. As I got the last kill of the task, uh, somebody came in and TB'd me, and then... He just left, so I don't, I don't know if I was just too intimidating or what, but hey, free Dragonstone Bolt, 300 GP, I will take that. Thank you very much. Wait, no, he was waiting for me outside. Wait, was, <laughs> was the boss dealing too much damage? You're trolling, dude. I've never seen somebody do this before. This is amazing. Oh. Okay, Dragon Two-Hander Sword. Uh, I just, I got a skeleton task from, uh, what's his name? The Burthorp Slayer Master Guy, Turiel. And I was like, you know, I'm just gonna kill Calvarion, because why not? I just don't really feel like going and doing skeletons in Edgeville. And of course, first kill, Dragon Two-Hander, because we live in a funny life. Oh, finally, I've been skipping tasks for, like, so long without getting any wildy bosses or revenants. But there we go, revenants, we've done it. We have a revenants task, and it is time to redeem ourselves. For the uninitiated who stumbled upon this video without watching the other 99 videos in this series, how dare you not watch all 99 of them before you watch this one? I'm very, very offended. Uh, our revenants log is not great. We have about, I think... 24 2500 scold knights after the buff update so we're like three and a half maybe almost four times the drop rate i don't remember exactly so hopefully we can get ourselves a weapon if not i'll just keep crying about it it's okay well it is four in the morning right now i just woke up and i decided you know let's go to revs it's a great time i killed one rev and then got attacked so uh yeah oh man six magic seeds i think that is a technical roll on the rear drop table of these guys but it didn't quite hit a weapon i've gotten so many of these i just i just don't know what to think anymore honestly please tell me i'm wrong about the magic seeds still being part of the rear drop table can someone tell me if i'm right or wrong i can't find any reference of it on the wiki so maybe they changed it at some point but i'm like 99 percent sure that that is actually a uh, failed roll on the uh, table so there's another magic seed drop i'm having a great morning thank you for asking i really appreciate that you're so sweet and kind and considerate guys what the heck is going on here i know this is a hardcore and he's got like two accounts blocking it but honestly i've never seen anything like that and he just logged i don't even think i could have attacked him oh but seriously i highly recommend if you're doing revs to literally just bring a couple pieces of magical equipment and uh ancient magics to cast ice barrage because i just escaped from a pk'er who had gotten me frozen, super deep wildy, and uh, I just saved myself one million gold in loot, and God knows how much money, like a million gold from getting PK'd, so it's definitely worth it uh, to learn how to just freeze when your freeze timer's at like four seconds or so, and then get an easy escape, and then say good fight, and then they say bad words to you. 
Oh my god, holy... Okay, I was gonna get off before this trip because I have to get ready to go look at cars since my car's engine blew up. That was a little bit random of a story. But we just got the ancient relic that's 16 million gold and also a collection log slot. Oh yes, baby. It may not be a rev weapon, but it is... Uh, it's actually better than rev weapon, maybe? I don't know the prices of crossbow, but it's hard to imagine that a lot of those items push 16 mil. Also, there is collection log slot number 1250. Looking good. That was my goal for this year was to hit 1250 collection log slot. So now that we've hit that, I guess we have to set it up to 1300. I mean, it's pr pretty unlikely to finish that by the end of the year, but you never know. Sometimes you go on a spooning streak and, uh, yeah, I can't believe that. We actually just got an ancient relic. I've never gotten one of these before, obviously. And, uh, so, well, Jesus, 16 mil. So let's look at the rev log uh, just for a moment so I can see. I'm only missing the ancient medallion. So we almost have the entire rev log completed besides the weapons. And we've not gotten any of them. That's so silly. And the last kill of the revs task. What do we get? It looks like just blighted angler fish. And we're coming in right before the system update. And, uh, yeah, I think that might be the best rev task I've ever had because, wow, I mean, 16 mil. It's just, it's nice to get that as a little surprise drop. So I'm going to keep doing Wildy stuff. I'm, I'm feeling quite motivated now. That's exactly what I needed to give me the motivation boost. And uh, last kill, you always do one kill after the task. You never know what you could get as long as I stop hitting zeros. My God. God, please. Okay, here we go. Here we go. It's actually going to die now, and we got Runite Bar. See, 30k. Easy. Oh, all right. I see where you're going with this, Crystallia. 90 bears, which is actually pretty exciting, considering that I'm a little bit dry at R2, and by a little bit, I mean considerably, significantly, ridiculously dry. I've done over 600 Callisto back in the day, which meant I was dry on the ring just from that. Now I'm dry on the ring from RTO and the Void Waker Hilt, so I'm obviously very deserving of something. It's definitely coming, this task. So I had to hop because a bot crashed me, and then I come into this world, and uh, the world's free immediately, so I go in, and then some PVMer comes in, and I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. I go back to kind of half AFKing the boss, <laughs> and he hits me with his Urson Chain Mace, hits a 35 with the spec, and then the bear hits me for like 10, and I just instantly die. So congrats to you on the loot you just got for me. I just got killed by a PVMer. Okay, last world hop before I realize that it's Friday, and there's no way to actually kill RTO. Let's see. Yep, no, that is, that's just not happening, unfortunately. Let's go do something else, uh, at least for the weekend, because <laughs> it's just, it's not possible. You don't find worlds on the weekends. So I've made a tough decision. I have decided to sell off the Xerite crossbow. Technically for one mil more than I bought it for, but GE text means I actually lost three mil. So can I get an F in the chat? Uh, I just realized I won't really use this thing at too many places. I bought it for Leviathan, and then I got spooned at Leviathan. And I know it's really good at TOA, but I have Void Waker, and I am not super good at TOA yet, so I still need to bring in a good amount of supplies. So anyways, rambling over, we have 700 million gold to spend, and I kind of want to do Vorkath. And so I'm thinking I'm going to upgrade our melee gear because you use melee at an insane amount of bosses, and just having better melee gear is good. Okay, here we are, the Ultor Ring and the Torva Plate Legs. Check out this deal I got on the Ultor Ring, by the way. I'm kind of a market master. Uh, art of the deal, baby. I saved one coin on that offer. So let's check out how impactful these upgrades are. So we have 127 melee strength, equipping the Torva legs over the uh, Bandos uh, skirt. I forget what it's called. It gives us two melee strength. And then the old Tor ring over the Berserker ring gives us plus four melee strength. So we should be able to get a good amount of max hits. The only thing we're missing here for best in slot strength is is the Torva Full Helm, and uh, we just can't afford it with 162 mil. So we gotta go make some more money. Hopefully Vorkast's nice to us. We can just get a Skeletal Visage today. I actually don't even know if that thing's worth anything anymore, but let's pretend it is. I have just learned the hard way that with this gear setup, my magic bonus is so low that I actually splash uh, the Crumble Undead spell here at Vorkast. So I do need to bring a Staff Switch because I just got hit 50 twice in one kill, and that's, uh, that's not very good. Oh my gosh, I haven't even been here that long, and look, we actually tied my PB of 52 seconds, which is also the Grandmaster speedrun time. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to say that the Ultor Ring and the Torva Plate Legs are the most insane upgrades ever, but I think they might be the most insane upgrades ever. Just adding these Plate Legs on gives so much defense bonus that I have been bringing so much less food to Vorkath, and usually not even using all of it. Of course, now I'm taking a ton of damage, but shh, you guys don't, we don't need to talk about that. Wait a minute! 
wait a minute, stop the presses. I, I didn't even notice it because this thing's worth like five gold, basically. What is this, dude? Another Dragon Ball necklace and a Vorkath head in the same kill. You could you could technically say it's 1 in 50k for that to happen if you want to be sassy. And, you know, maybe I'm feeling a little sassy today, so we'll say it's 1 in 50k. That is abnormal, dude. I think that's my fifth Dragon Ball necklace or something, and we only have 2,000 kills, so... Yeah, I much would have preferred the pet, or the jar, or the visage, or something, but I guess this is a cute little thing to add to our collection. How much is it actually worth? 50k! That's a little bit better than 5 gold. Only a little bit, though. Okay, I really wish I had my shadow play on, because I just hit our max hit with the Void Waker. It was a 90 with the Void Waker spec, which is just nuts. Normally you can't hit this, but of course I am wearing the salve. And Vorkath does count as an undead, so that boosts the damage significantly. But 90 damage in one hit? God, this thing is so busted. I'm really glad they released this, because it's just so fun to use. Okay, yeah, that is my fifth Dragon Bone necklace. I did get one before the log came out. And don't worry, these uh, visages are not actually from Vorkath. I got one from KBD. And I honestly have no idea where I got the other one. I just do not remember. It's been too long. And here's about 100 Vorkath kills since we started this grind. Dragon Plate Legs, very, very nice. We're at 2,200 kills. Just 800 off the Fabled Pet rate, but also 800 off the Jar rate. So technically, we're dry on getting one of those. So, you know, that means a drop's coming any minute now. And it's not going to be another Dragon Bone Necklace. Because I don't think I could handle that. Dude, the biggest downside of only doing bonds is that sometimes I'll forget to renew my membership with a bond, and then I just <laughs> try to log in one day, and it says, you need a member's account, and then I end up in Lumbridge. Gotta run all the way to Varrock, get scammed on the ratios of a bond. Gonna try a little something that I've never done before, and that is farming Callisto for Elite Clues and the Wildy in the uh, Lone Gym Rat Friend Chat. If you haven't watched his YouTube videos, by the way, I highly recommend them. They're a very, very good collection log related, absolute legend, and owner of a quite exquisite third age piece. But yeah, basically, you just get a bunch of people together, you go to Callisto, and you all kill the boss. So the rate of 1 in 50 for the Elite Clue is for each person, even if there's like 10 people killing the boss. And you can smoke this thing so fast with 10 people. And so I'm going to see exactly how fast it is. I've heard of a lot of people doing this method for grinding elites, and uh, I'm going to try it out. Okay, check out how ridiculous these kills are. You ready? Here we go. The bear's about to spawn. I'm going to shoot my web weaver spec off at the start. Look at the health. Look at it just drain down so fast. This is awesome. And like I said, every time we kill this bear, it is a 1 in 50 chance for an elite clue. You just really got to watch out for who he's targeting. And boom, it is dead. Simple as that. And look, everyone gets a loot roll, so it's like a little ridiculous. Look, I just got four super restores. It's actually a pretty decent drop. I don't know if that's just because I got lucky with my hits or what. But yeah, you can roll uniques from this. And so I could technically get lucky, get the pet, the Void Waker piece, or the ring that I'm missing. So I think maybe this is just how I'll grind for those over time. Obviously, it's going to take forever to actually get those drops from here, but it is possible. All right, just finished our first trip here. It was about 35 minutes. I was in the queue. Yes, there is a queue for this. you got to sit outside and wait. So only 10 people at a time kill the boss. Here for about 35 minutes, let's check the looting bag. Just over 1 million gold. So, I mean, that's actually halfway decent. I'm not going to lie. And uh, did I bring a royal seed pot? There it is. Uh, no elite clue, unfortunately. We got 57 kills in just over half an hour. So it's probably about 100 kills an hour, not counting the time doing clues, not counting the time banking and stuff, obviously. So pretty decent. Should be able to get at least one and a half elite clues doing this per hour. And then a halfway okay chance of getting uniques. Guys... Guys, I don't think I'm okay. Nothing's working. No, I'm gonna die at Callisto. This is the worst day ever. I don't even know what's happening. I think my internet's going out. This sucks. Okay, I was alive somehow. I have no idea how I survived in Callisto's lair for a full minute to log out, but I had nine health, and I was in the, in the, uh, the outside of his lair in that little cave, and I was getting absolutely smashed by random uh, NPCs, so... Yeah, I can't believe I survived. I really thought I'd log back in and be dead, but, you know, we are blessed today. Well, nobody's running Callisto anymore, so it's going to be really infrequent when I get to do this, and I did unfortunately not get any elite clues uh, during that grind there. Probably just got a little bit unlucky, or I actually have to have the Ring of Wealth charged to get the double elite clues. I hope that's not the case, but I'm going to go charge on my Ring of Wealth. Anyways, I was looking through the little CC, and I got a question. Who is Dark, Shelby? And now it's time for everyone's favorite part of the video, the Zolra Detour. We are 6,500 kills into Zolra, missing the pet, 
missing the jar. We're pretty dry on both of those. And we're missing the magma mutagen, which is expected, honestly. So here we go. I don't know how many kills I'm going to do. I guess it's just until I get bored. So I could stay here till 8,000 kills. I could stay here for five kills. It's a mystery to all of us. Did you see it? There's no way for you to see it, actually. I just realized I blocked it. Elite glue. Yes. Solar has a drop rate of, I think, 1 in 75 for elite glue. It's 1 in 71 for me because I am a, an elite combat task gamer very totally very talented at the game uh and yeah so that's a pretty decent rate considering i can kill this boss like 40 times an hour so we should be getting elite clues every hour and a half to two hours and now time for an elite clue upgrade that i really should have gotten a long time ago i need to turn the camulet into an eternal camulet i gotta pay this not very nice guy here i have some choice words that i'd like to call him but i won't because i'm a better person than that He's charging a million gold to make this unlimited. Here's a million coins, you stinky man. And now we can use the camulet to teleport to... Now, not next to this guy again. I want to get away from him. Oh, God, he's looking at me. This is so awkward. Go to the Anakar's Temple entrance, and then it is pretty close to the run-up here to get to this. Now, listen, this only saves me probably like five to ten seconds normally i have to go to the house portal run all the way around and up to here but now i could just run from here to here it's it's like so worth it guys it, it was worth a million gold right all righty another big one 6600 kill count at zolra my favorite boss in the game i think i, I actually might go to 7000 i'm not gonna lie this boss is pretty laid back can throw on some videos in the background shout out to wendigoon i'm just gonna binge his stuff and uh you know, just power through this. Let's do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've committed the mortal sin against every RuneScape YouTuber, and I picked up the drop before I could show it on the ground and point at it and go, ooh, ah, big drop. But there it is, Serpentine Visage. It's 1.7 mil. Oh, God, that is horrible. How much money per hour even is Zolra at this point? I've done 113 kills so far. And made 10 mil. And nearly 2 mil. That is just from that last unique. Man. Zolra needs some love. That nerf was rough. Except you can't give much love to Zolra. Because Sprinklefly882 will come up here with 450,000 kills at this boss. And just grind it. Sell the gold. Make me sad. You know, I almost missed miss this. But uh, look at this beautiful kill count. 6,000. 666 and there's 6700 kill count at Zalra and I just want to apologize a little bit if this video has taken a while to come out things have been a little crazy I also got rear-ended yesterday and my neck and back are just feeling like garbage so I've been trying to take it easy and uh, of course the Zalra grind doesn't stop just because of something silly like that but yeah I'm still committed I think I'm going to 7000 kills and we are going to get the other mutagen before we get the pet probably let's be honest oh boy howdy it's been a long time since i've seen something so uh unusual or interesting sorry something so interesting look at that we just got a dragon spear from zolra let's go look up how rare that is and of course i'm not the kind to complain because of rare drop table because of course after you roll rare drop table there's no chance you're gonna get anything decent anyway so if you get something on here like the dragon spear that is one in 9929 divided by two because you know zolra drops two drops you know i'm not gonna say oh that could have been the mutagen because no it couldn't have it was rare drop table but yeah that's interesting uh we'll see if we can get the rune javelins next time which are one in twenty two thousand. all right i take it back maybe i will maybe i'll complain just like a little bit not not too much to the point where it's annoying and takes up much of the video but we just got shield left half I feel like that's like my fifth shield left half from Zora. I feel like I get these all the time. Uh, yeah, shield left half. We also got a dragon spear today. Our rare drop table collection is coming along nicely. Also, Zora hit me for 43 times in a row during that kill. So in case you're wondering, that's why I bring Karn Blondes and Manta Rays, because you, you really never know what's going to happen to this stinky boss. All right, 6,800 kills at Zora. And these last 100 were very interesting. You guys all saw that. So, uh... Here's to the next 100. I'm sure they'll be so much better. Oh, there we go. We got another Serpentine Visage. Finally, another unique at 68, 69. And it looks like the value has tanked even further since I got that first one. A little depressing, but, you know, we got to push on. We got to press on and get the collection log items. We're not here for money. We're here for that little box to pop up. 6,900 kill count at Zulra. Just 100 more to go. Plowing through this. I'm trying to stay motivated, folks, but hear me out. Zolra is not as fun after 7,000 kills. I'm not going to lie. It does lose its charm just a little bit. Okay, um, we got another Serpentine Visage. See, this is why you don't play Iron Man, folks. No, I'm just kidding. Iron Man mode is a ton of fun. I highly recommend it. 
But this is also a reason why you don't do collection logging, because imagine if I was just some poor fella trying to finish this overlog, and you just get three of these in a row, and you got to keep seeing the value go down as you get them, because I'm not selling this loot until I'm done. So, uh, yeah, I probably lost, like, over half a mil just from not selling these visages as I'm getting them, but that's okay. I don't know if I've ever shown this tip before in my videos, but when you're killing Zulra and you're using blowpipe like me in uh, Masori and such, what you want to do is only load your blowpipe with a little bit of Zulra scales. That way, when you're, do when you're doing your trip and you end a kill, but you have, like, a full inventory of food and loot, you can actually put the Zulra scales from the kill into your blowpipe to free up another inventory space to loot. Now, I know this is a lot of effort. Oh, baby, that is not a serpentine visage. Finally, we got something else. The Magic Fang at 69.35. Let's pick all this junk up. And look, I'm going to show you. I shouldn't have eaten that Karim one. Uh, usually when I get to low health, I'll use the Desert Amulet to teleport out to uh, the Elidinus statue here. And then just uses a Laundra teleport to teleport back to extend my trips. Because, like, if you get knocked down to, like, 20 health at the end of the kill, you're going to eat your whole inventory where the food is over. And it's just not worth it. Now, of course, if you do have a max POH and you don't have Desert uh, Amulet 4, you could just teleport to your POH instead. And uh, I do this on my Iron Man as well. I promise it's completely self-sustaining on those Elandra teleports. The only thing you lose is a bit of profit. But I'm pretty sure the extra kills per hour make it worth it. Anyways. I got on a little tangent there. We got a magic fang, baby. Well, this was a pretty long trip as Zulra. Look at that inventory. Every single spot occupied by loot. And I, of course, did have, I had to use my trick where I put the Zulra scales in my blowpipe. I would not have been able to loot this all without that. I mean, I could have I could have drank this last dose of anti-venom, but do I look like a monster to you? I was wondering why my chaos runes weren't automatically going in the rune patch. I thought it was glitched or something, but nope. We have actually gotten 16,000 chaos runes from Zulra just in this grind. And I forgot to switch back to Thralls. When I went to the uh, when I went to do an elite clue last, so that's a little sad. Another amazing kill count milestone. I just had to show you guys. It was very important. It means a lot to me. And here we go, seven thousand kill count. And wow, what a beautiful way to end it. A nice drop and an elite clue. That's so good. Seven thousand kills at Zolra is uh, that's a lot. I mean, that's a lot. If you combine the kills that I have in my hardcore, it's well over 9,000. So uh, we're closing in on 10,000 Zolras killed on this game. That's disgusting. I'm not really proud of it, but it's something that I've done. And that means uh, after the next 1,000 kills, we'll be double the drop rate of the pet. We're already double the drop rate of the swamp. And we're also dry on the mutagen. So I'm literally dry on like every item that I need right now. Which is a little grim, but, you know, that's just how it goes sometimes when you are collection logging. But, yeah, log is looking pretty good with the uniques now. Uh, it, it might look like I don't have anywhere near enough uniques for my kill count, but most of them were probably pre-log. I don't know. I'm not going to count it up and do the math. That's way too hard. All right, elite clue done, and we are now at 62 out of 100 elite clues stacked. God, I still have to do 38 more elites. In my head, this was a lot easier to gather 100 elite clues, honestly. I thought, yeah, I'll just do some bossing. It'll come over time. But then when you realize most bosses drop one elite clue every two hours, that's like over 200 hours of just killing bosses pretty efficiently, not even counting the time it takes to do the clues. So yeah, I may have gotten a bit in over my head, but I'm committed. Also throwing up on screen the loot that we got from that 488 Zulra. I mean, it's probably around 500. I think some of the kills didn't count because I think we were at an almost exact kill count milestone of 6,500 when we started. So it might be missing a couple things. But yeah, 42 mil, not too bad. Pretty decent. All right, so after selling all the loot from Zulra, a bunch of the loot I found in my bank still from the Desert Treasure bosses and the Vorkath loot, we just made 161 million gold. I also emptied out our, uh, what's it called, Master Scroll Book and sold the dupes of that we had. That was over 2 mil just for those. Let's throw the cash in there. And our cash stack's at a crisp 335 mil. So I'm sitting here thinking, I wonder if there's any gear upgrades that I want to buy with this. Or if I should just save it for implings for clues. Uh, I'm not 100% sure yet, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, one more fun little thing, actually. I didn't notice, but I've accidentally been hanging on to a lot of antidotes. Like, I had over 3,000 in my bank, so I took 3,000 out to sell. That's 21 mil. Uh, I guess in all of my history of killing Zolra, I just forgot to sell these things because <laughs> in these past 500 kills, I got 340 of them. So for me to have 3,000, that must be like 5,000 Zolra kills worth of antidotes or something. I don't know why I thought I needed that many. 
All right, time to let you in on a secret little grind that I've been doing for a while. Uh, I haven't been super consistent with it, so I don't have the most incredible stack yet, but I have been trying to remember to do my crystal tree as often as possible because it does give you between, I think, like 12 to 18 crystal shards a day or something. And so if we look at the bank, I have over 1,100 crystal shards just from this, I'm pretty sure, which is super nice. And uh, the reason I have so many crystal saplings, if you're wondering, is because of the elven crystal chest that gives you a chance for those. And also, there's still one item I'm actually missing from there, which is the Dragonstone Boots. I have dupes of every single other piece except the chest plate, and I did go extraordinarily dry to get my first Dragonstone piece. I don't remember what video it is. If I can find it, I'll link it, or maybe one of you can comment it, and then I'll throw it in the description. But it took me like several thousand to get my first piece, and it's a 1 in 500. Plus, I got the Uncut Onyx, which is 1 in 10,000 before I got a single piece of Dragonstone armor. So I have a pretty tumultuous past with this. But I want to go ahead and use all the crystal shards that we have stacked up on the chest to make uh, enhanced crystal keys so we can open it up and see if maybe we can get lucky and just finish that Dragonstone set. Making these keys is actually so fun. I forgot how good it was because check this out. You are going to be blown away if you don't already know what this is, obviously. If you know, you know. But if you don't, watch this XP drop. 13,500 XP in crafting and smithing for every single inventory you do of these. And uh, to put that in perspective, how much crafting and smithing XP I've gotten from this, just wait until we check how many times I've opened this chest. Now, there is an obvious downside, and that is crystal shards are expensive as hell to get. I think every crystal shard is like 15,000 gold or something. I'll throw up current prices on the screen. It's super expensive, and you use 10 crystal shards for every single key. So, yeah, it, it's, it's not worth it, but it's pretty fun. Well, there's over 100,000 XP gains in about one minute, and we now have 116 enhanced crystal keys. Now, I don't exactly remember the way I used to do this or how many keys I'm going to bring per trip, so I'll start with 10 and see how it goes, and I probably want to bring the Eternal Teleport Crystal since that brings you right to the center of Prif. And here we go. It's time to head to the chest. It's been so long since I've been here. Like, seriously, I think the last time I was here was like a month after this update came out or something like that. Let's check. I've opened... Oh, my God. I've opened this chest 5,100 times. I didn't think it was that bad. I really did not think I'd open this chest that much. That is disgusting, which means I'm pretty sure I'm quite dry on finishing the full set. I think you should get the whole set completed in under 5,000, but who knows? Anyways, let's start opening this. The loot is decent, and the nice thing is this is all profit since this uh, all of the crystal shards were acquired by, uh, what was I going to say, by farming those trees. But if you did actually pay for this, prepare to lose an insane amount of money. Oh yeah, also as you can tell from my inventory, you do get a lot of uh, crystal key pieces, which you can obviously combine into crystal keys. And then you get crystal shards from the chest as well. So you do end up getting more rolls than you originally had. Like, look, how many uh, crystal shards have I already gotten as a rebase since we started? So I've already gotten 35 after a couple inventories. So it's not a lot, but it adds up. Also, another fun little fact about this chest is not only is it tedious to get the shards to get the keys, but look, it's super tedious to open as well. Like I said, you can only bring around 10 per trip. If you bring any more than this, your inventory has a high chance to fill up. There's a drop that's like 10 rune ore, not noted, of course, because Jagex is such a funny little company. And uh, yeah, it just takes forever to open. I still can't believe I've done this over 5,000 times. That is ridiculous. Oh boy, the faded shield left half. It's one in 256 from here, and that's what I'm talking about with the rune ore. I got two of them in one roll. It's so silly. But yeah, it's uh, it's not insanely rare, so I'm not like upset that I got it. But I, I remember originally when this chest came out and they hadn't released the drop rates yet, everybody thought it was super rare. And of course, we got a ton of those. And you know what? I'm actually happy to get as many of these as I can because I just love seeing stupid collections in the log. Like shield left halves, I have 200. I mean, two, sorry, 20. Maybe one day we'll have 200. I jumped the gun a little bit there. But yeah, I do like seeing stuff like this. And I'm curious, if any of you have a ridiculous amount of some item in your collection log, please do let me know. You could tweet the pictures at me or something like that. Like, how many Pharaoh Scepters does any of you have in the log? Has somebody just done so much Pyramid Plunder that they've gathered like 50 of these? I don't know. Maybe. Well, I went ahead and used all of the keys, and we did not get anything, unfortunately, although it's a bit intoxicating opening this chest. It's quite fun. Now, you do on average lose about 100,000 gold every time you open this when you factor in the cost of getting the crystal shards, and then, of course, the amount that you get back from opening the chest. It's expensive. You also need a crystal key every single time. Don't discount that. Those are also about 20,000 gold each, so... 
It's really bad. I mean, if I wanted to open this a thousand times right now, it would cost me about a hundred million gold, but we do have a pretty nice cash stack right now. So I'm going to take this as a divine sign and we're just going to open this chest for a while. I don't know exactly how many I'm going to do. I'm just going to roll with the punches and see how it goes. All right, here we go. The first of many dark, depressing purchases. There's like 23, 24 million gold spent just for 100 openings of this chest. Now, like I said, the rebate is nice, and so that'll add up to a little bit extra. But uh, yeah, this is still a little painful, but it's okay. We have a lot of money. I don't really know what I'd want to buy with this money anyway, so it's fine. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, this is not as bad as I thought it was. These actually give 150 crystal shards each. each. Also, they cannot be noted when you turn them in for some reason. Don't know why they did that, but whatever. Uh, so this is actually 150 enhanced crystal keys for that price that I just said moments ago that I've already forgotten. Everybody, place your bets now. Will I reach 200 mil smithing and crafting before I get the full set? My money's on yes. And there's the 150 gone. And on the last one, we get another dupe. Dude, what are the, what are the odds of the last one we open giving something? Oh, man. So that's five dupes in total out of the set of five, which I don't know exactly how many dupes are expected when going for a five-piece set that all has the same drop rate. I'm, I'm sure somebody knows the math. But uh, yeah, there's five dupes, nine pieces in total, which means we're almost caught up to how many we're supposed to have. We should have at least ten pieces by now, so that's good at least. But hey, we got a piece, which means it is possible, and we're going to keep going for it. Also, you guys ready to see how much these are worth? I'm spending so much money going for this, you're probably like, these must be valuable. Well, they actually are more valuable than I thought they were. I was going to make a joke about how they're worth like 20k, but these things really sell for almost 400k. All right. Coming up on 5,500 chests, which will put us at a, you know, average of 11 drops from this. So now we got to get two more drops to make up for our dryness, but that's okay. I could feel it coming. You know, do you smell those boots? And not like in a foot fetish kind of way, but just like they're come. Okay, I'm, I'm going to stop talking now. More. No, no, not another pair of gloves. Are you joking me? Oh, this is so painful. Uh, okay, so now we've gotten, is that our 10th piece of Dragonstone, I believe? Let's check the collection log because I have to know to make myself be able to sleep at night. Yep, that's our 10th piece of Dragonstone. So, uh, yeah, three dupes of the gauntlets, a dupe of the plate legs, two dupe full helms, and now we're just waiting on our dupe plate body. More! All right, coming up on the big 6,000, and we... Seriously? Seriously? Oh, my God. Dude, on 6,000 exactly, too, of course, because why not? I, I don't know what's with me getting drops on these massive milestones. We got that elite clue at Zolron 7,000. We got the Dragonstone Gauntlets on our last key. And now we get Dragonstone Plate Body on 6,000. So that joke I said about needing to get the dupe Plate Body before we could get the boots, it seems like it's true. So there we go. We're now at 11 items in total when we're owed 12, so you never know. In the next opening, we could get the boots. I'm starting to get a little bit demotivated, and remembering why I stopped doing this grind. <laughs> This is horrible, man. Anyways, I'm not addicted. I can stop whenever I want. Ten more. Let's do it. You know what the worst and best part is? You don't have to pull coins out of your bank anymore to buy stuff. So uh, I actually can't see how much money I'm losing yet, which is makes me feel a little bit better, but uh, not that much better. So I ran the numbers, and this might not be perfectly accurate. Some of y'all who actually made it all the way through college and didn't drop out like me can correct me. But I think on average it takes about 5,700 openings of this chest to finish the entire Dragonstone armor set. So we're only a little bit unlucky. We're just like 500 unlucky. So I can't really complain that much. I'm just going to accept it, hunker down, and keep grinding. Okay, every single time I buy these teleport seeds, they just get more expensive, and I couldn't figure it out, and now that I'm thinking about it, I've bought like a lot of these today, and so I have this weird feeling that maybe I am causing the price to go up. If so, I'm sorry if this is just me, you know, thinking I have way more influence on the market, then you know it is what it is, but uh, yeah, when I started buying them today, they were like just over 2 mil, barely over, and now they're not even buying for 2.1, oh. Here we go, 6,500 chests. I think I'm going to set a hard limit for myself and say that we'll go up to 7,000 at most right now. Really don't want to blow through the whole cash stack, but I think if we just do a little bit every now and then, it'll be fine. Okay, here we go. Last inventory of enhanced crystal keys we're making, at least for today. There we go. Time to open the last 200 or so and see if we get met with more despair or if hope can finally prevail. 
Dude, no. What? Are you... Uh, another pair of the gauntlets? That's three in this opening? Dude, this sucks. <laughs> I don't even have any other words for it. This just sucks, man. Are you dead serious? That's three... Dragonstone Gauntlet dupes and one Dragonstone Play Body dupe. Alright, that's four dupes in just this opening. And with me just needing the boots. It's a one in five every time I roll the table. So this will be the fifth roll of the table. So if we get another roll, that is, assuming before 7,000. Oh, that's so demotivating and heartbreaking to keep seeing dupes rolling in. Especially with how long it took me just to get my first unique here. Like, I'm glad it's all evening out. But not really in the way I wanted Dude, are you, okay, okay, all right, all right, this is awesome, this is great, okay, so I did something, I don't know what it was, in a past life maybe, maybe I did the ritual sacrifice of a hundred trillion puppies or something like that, that's my only explanation as to why I would be treated so poorly, the inventory after, well there's five dupes now in this opening, four of them being the just the gauntlets, like all I can do is get the gloves, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, man. I must be clicking the chest in the wrong spot. Maybe there's a certain pixel. Maybe I have to start clicking the top left pixel of the chest here to allow myself to get the boots. But, uh, yeah, maybe I'm just doing something wrong. You know, it's, it's got to be what it is, right? <laughs>
We should have more dragon stones if we open it 1,910 times. I have no idea. It makes no sense. That's why I wanted to do this in the actual price checker. Here we go. 77.4 mil. And now you might be asking, but Shelby, how much did you spend on opening this chest? And I really don't want to know, but I guess we can check. Okay, on screen, you can see how much we made from this. Obviously not including the crystal keys that we got as rebate, but I use those, so it doesn't really matter. We spent in total 218 million 170,000 gold and then we got this 77 mil from opening it which means we lost almost 141 million gold uh yeah that's pretty painful that is very painful actually and that's not including the ge tax that's just gonna slurp down my uh slurp down my happiness just a little bit more but yeah that is what you expect 140 million gold to open this chest about 2,000 times which means i lost about 70,000 gold per chest which is not as bad as i thought it was going to be to be honest but that's not really the best consolation prize so uh yeah we'll be back in the near future i think next time i do this i want to have enough gold saved up to go all the way up to 10,000 crystal chests opened and uh, maybe then we'll get the boots but in the end, the only thing that matters is our Dragon Shield left half pieces are now at 26 in the collection log. You know, hopefully one day we can hit 100, but, you know, that's just a long-term dream. Oh, shoot, there's one thing I forgot to show that I really wanted to show. How much smithing and crafting XP we got from that adventure. We got nearly 1 million XP in both skills just from making the keys. <laughs> this is such a stupid method. It's actually over 2 mil per hour if you're just making the keys. In both skills, by the way. So it's 4 million XP per hour. It costs a lot of money, but it's really good XP. Well, we were on the topic of things that I'm dry on, and I started thinking about the Dragon Warhammer. As you can see here, I've killed over 10,000 Lizardman Shamans, so we're 2x the drop rate. And I kind of just have a little bit of motivation to kill them. I just want to lay back, listen to some music, and shoot these guys in the face with a toxic blowpipe. I do wish you could wear Masori here. That would speed these up so much, but you can't really avoid the acid attack while you're in there. And, uh, yeah, I'm also bringing Void Waker. Give it a shot. I'm wearing Light Bearer the whole time. See if that helps out at all, or if it's just, like, not worth it. So I just realized it's time to restock the blowpipe, and oh my god, Desert Treasure 2 has destroyed Dragon Dart prices. 857 gold, are you serious? This is so cheap. Oh my gosh, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and buy like 8,000, no, I'm going to go 10,000, I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to buy 10,000 Dragon Darts because, uh, yeah, that is an absolute steal for Dragon Darts. Like seriously, look at the price history, and uh, yeah, these things used to be way more expensive. Also, Void Waker is a big no-no. Light Bearer with Blowpipe is so nice. It means that even if I'm not paying full attention, uh, I can heal myself up really, really easily. You get that spec back so fast. I am so very sorry to all of you that I forgot to record the first one. I promise I was excited. I was just so excited I forgot I missed it. Okay, it's kind of embarrassing. But there is our second long bone of this grind so my last clip messed up but we are done with the lizard man shaman grind let's check out exactly how many i've killed i already know how many i did because i already recorded this once and it failed and then i teleported away and then i found out the file was corrupted and we don't need to talk about it how many lizard men have i killed Eleven thousand eighty-four, which means we killed just over 1000 lizard men in this session it was honestly one of the most boring experiences i've ever had in this game i hate these lizard men shaman it is just the most dreadful grind in the game I'm so happy I got spooned on my hardcore, but I'm so sad I have to do this on my main as well. So let's do something else to cheer me up a little bit. So now I'm feeling quite motivated to finish up that 100 elite clue stack. So I'm going to be doing some Shades of Morton, a method that's actually pretty fun, at least at the start of grinding it. I use the tick manipulation method with the Celastra Spark, which allows you to burn an insane amount of shades per hour. It is really, really fast when you do this method. I also combine that with the gold coffin so I can store more remains, which lets me bring almost 20 of the uh, redwood pyre logs with me every trip and this is basically the method right here use the celastra spark next tick use the pyre log next tick use the uh urium remains and then next tick you burn it and then you can go ahead and grab your key in between the burning cycle and then look at that it's a perfect cycle if you do this exact method and it's really nice and then instead of grabbing i will empty out my coffin here and then just continue it over and over again which results in a really good amount of xp per hour in prayer and fire making if you are interested in that kind of thing this method is amazing and you can get up to two ish elite clues per hour uh, that's if you're combining the gathering of the keys and doing the elite clues. I think if you're just banking the keys, you bank like 2.3 or 2.4 elite clues per hour, which is pretty darn quick, honestly. So we'll see how long my wrists can keep this up without dying. 
Okay, you know what I just realized? I'm actually getting like 400,000 fire making XP per hour doing this method, so I'm technically grinding for the Phoenix. If I just do this method for Elite Clues all the way to 200 mil fire making, then I think the Phoenix is like a 1 in 333 from Winter Todd. It's literally three times more common than a Tome of Fire at that point, so... Yeah, that kind of does sound more fun than actually doing Winter Todd, I'm not gonna lie. And, oh, we didn't get the pop-up for it. Well, well, that's that's a little anticlimactic, but we just hit level 107 fire making. Very cool. That's exactly what you guys were expecting. I know you're all excited to see me get 120 one day. All right, I've been doing this for a while. Look at all these keys. It looks so good. You get way more of these stupid crimson ones than all the other ones, which kind of sucks. Because the optimal way to do it is to grab like half and half of one and another key that are really close to each other. So you can open these chests really quick. But in the end, I'm going to be sitting there opening these stupid crimson chests for a while. But that's okay. Let's do some elite clues. Let's try to get the stack up to at least closer to 100. I would have done more of this, but unfortunately, I am bored. Oh, d what was I thinking? I just grabbed a dragon impling when I had an elite clue in my inventory. I was going to record this and be all like, ooh, we got a dragon imp. One in 50 chance for an elite. But there was a zero out of a trillion chance because we had the elite i forgot to drop it first but we did get six snap seeds which are worth 178k so that's still a win also i'm gonna crash this guy and steal one of his blood belts hope he doesn't mind i'm just kidding i'm hopping i'm a good person unless there's someone here too yep no i'm stealing this guy's blood belt okay listen i'm not trying to say i'm a genius but i'm a genius look at this since i only have this type of key left that doesn't combo with other ones i can set the camera up like this and just foot pedal my way so I don't actually have to like put a bunch of effort into it. I just watch for the elite clue and I uh, pretty much chill. It's nice. This is honestly the worst part of elite clues. There's a clue step that requires you to dig right in front of the entrance to the water birth tunnel. So you just run right here and dig. It's actually a really great clue step. But there's another clue step on water birth that requires you to go all the way to the ladder where you fight the Dagonoth Kings. And that is probably one of the worst clue steps in the entire game i know it doesn't take as long as the dragon's eye step but honestly it rivals in the unenjoyment that i get from this unenjoyment is that a word i'm gonna look it up and put it on the screen if it's not a word then i just came up with a new word and i'm actually a genius if it is a word then i am a genius wordsmith i win either way all right last key well i actually have one more but i want to keep it in the bank so i can like get in here without having to burn more just in case i get a clue step and there we go we are now at 87 caskets i don't remember if we got lucky or not but uh you know let's just assume we got lucky it is me so look at all this bountiful loot from here we got 39 gold locks 27 of the blood bark scrolls 32 of the swamp bark scrolls i'd love to be able to say that any of this is worth anything but the uniques are pretty much dead actually the gold locks do out for what is it 19,000 gold and if you look here they sell for only like just over 18,000. so if you want a good item to out that might be one but yeah i don't really want to do the price check i'd have to go through all the different keys find out how many I did here how much I paid for everything it's too much work but I will say that according to my sources you do make a pretty good amount of money from this so we profit at GP I'm 90% sure well we still need a good little bit of elite clues before we hit 100 and I thought to myself what's like the best way to get elite clues that also has collection log slots for me and I just figured we should do the wildy bosses they have like a 1 in 50 drop rate as long as you're wearing the ring of wealth I and uh, I still need drops from every single one of them. So I'm going to do some Calvaryon for now because this is like kind of the most chill one. You can do pretty much infinite trips because you just don't take damage here. And uh, yeah, we should be getting Elite Clues pretty quickly. I think he's the fastest kills per hour out of any of the Wildy bosses, at least by my thoughts and estimations. And there's 400 KC for the uninitiated though. All we're missing is the Skull of Vetion, which is like 1 in 600 something. So if we stay at Calvaryon for the rest of our Elite Clues, we're more than likely to actually walk out of here with that Skull, which would be super nice. Also, I know you can't remind me, but I'm saying this out loud to hopefully remind myself. I need to switch the Berserker Ring for an Ultor Ring next trip. I'll probably get at least one max hit. Also, I don't know what is happening, but there are so many PKers today. Like, it is 10 a.m. on a Thursday. And I, I've been attacked, seriously, like every five or ten minutes. It is absolutely ridiculous. It's gotten to the point where I have to buy more proselyte, and that is just traumatizing to me. And it's 11.4k. Someone is absolutely milking me. Let's see, is it actually selling for that much? It's selling for more. Okay. Oh, that's... Hmm. That's not the Skull of Vetion. <laughs> uh, that is most certainly not the Skull of Vetion. Alright, well, there's our second Void Waker blade. Um... I don't I don't really know how to feel about this. I've only killed this boss 400 times, and I shouldn't have two of these, but 
Yeah, thank you, everybody. It's very deserved. It's very deserved. Hopefully, it doesn't say the kill count. Yeah, good. Don't want to rile them up too much. Don't want them to. Don't want them to know how spoon that is. I guess I'll just head to the GE and sell this so I can feel a little bit of that instant gratification. I am happy. I swear. I know my reaction's a little bit muted right now, but I swear it's just. <laughs> It's just the, it's just the utter bewilderment, you know, it's just weird. Wow, this thing is selling, has this gone up in price a ton recently or something? It sold for 50 mil. The GE price said 44.6 and then it said like 48, so I put it there for 48.4 thinking it might take a little bit to sell, but nope. Insta sold for 50 million gold. All right, I will take that. I think I made a good decision this morning coming to Calvarion. Uh, yeah, cash stack's looking healthy again after those L enhanced crystal keys. I keep not even having my mic next to me when these things happen because I'm like, well, we're not going to get anything. We're just getting elite clues, and now I've gotten a ring of the gods. Okay. All right. I mean, these are all more rare than the Skull of Vetion, I'm pretty sure, but, like, okay. I'll take it. So we've gotten a Void Waker Blade and a ring of the gods today within, like, 100 kills of each other or something. That's This is totally normal, actually. This is how this is just how Vetion or Calvarion is. Y'all should just, uh, y'all should go kill it. It's good money, clearly. Dude! what back to back into the skull of vetion excuse me what what okay all right <laughs> this is what you get when you go for elite clues apparently you green log vetion there we go so we get the void waker blade not too long later we get ring of the gods back to back into the skull okay you know they accuse me of having YouTube luck. They say Jagex rigs the luck of YouTubers, and I don't know why they say this. Can somebody give me, can someone point to even one example of something ridiculous happening like that? I've just never seen it. So anyways, there we go. Green logged Vetion and Calvarion. That's great. I was wondering if we we're going to green log anything this video, but yeah, we did. So yeah, not spooned at all, honestly. It took me 452 kills to get all this. I think that's pretty standard. <laughs> Well, Rig of the Gods sold for a clean 5 mil, and check out the Skull of Vetion, a quarter mil. That's actually a lot more than I expected to get for it. I will gladly take that, so an okay session at Calvarion today, I suppose. Uh, we're up to 90 elite caskets, and I just, I just want to open it so bad. I've been so close to 100 for like the past two days, and my willpower is waning. I really need to get these clues done fast, because I just want to open these. At least takes so long to get. So, anyways, the boss we're going to move on to now is Spindle. I'm at 851 kills here, and we're just missing the fangs. And, of course, the pet, which I did about 1,100 Venonatus before the rework. So, we got, like, just over halfway to the pet rate before the rework. So, we are not really dry yet. We've still got a long ways to go. Dude, I'm doing Callisto massing for elites. <laughs> I get away from everyone, but there's one PKer waiting down south, and he says, I let you go. Shh. Don't worry, I'll, I'll blur out your name, okay? I won't I won't rat on you, my boy. Back to Spindle, since the Callisto session died quickly thanks to PKers. How dare you attack us in the wilderness? I'm fuming, but we did get a Dragon Two-Hander on our second kill back to Spindle, which is a sign of good luck in my opinion. When you see a Dragon Two-Hander, you know some other good spicy stuff is coming. Has anyone else been having this lag where you click and, you know, your actions won't register for a little while, like a long while? And I checked my internet connection, and it's completely fine. I can still see people's messages in game. I'm loading everything just fine. I'm just uh, just not moving. My guy's just standing there waiting to die. What did I say about the dragon two-hander? None of y'all were doubting it, right? None of you guys were doubting the dragon two-hander because that is what made this happen. The fangs of Venonatus. So that means we've gotten everything right we've gotten all of the wieldy weapon upgrades yep we got three claws of callisto we just got the fangs and earlier today we got the skull of vetion very nice so now all i need to complete the wieldy boss trifecta is the venonatus pet and of course everything from rto because this boss just doesn't like me very much but that's okay Whoo, baby, two collection log slots in one day. Yup, two collection log slots in one day. It feels so good. 900 kills at Spindle. And honestly, I think these bosses feel like one of the fastest bosses in the game. Like the kill count just flies by when you're here, especially if you're doing something to entertain yourself. So yeah, 900, next stop, 1,000. Well, it's Friday. There are no free worlds at Spindle and I, I don't want to do RTO off task anymore. I'm just going to do, uh, do that on task because meleeing RTO off task is a little bit rough. Check Check it out, my friends, a massive accomplishment. 30 million fire-making XP. 
just uh, three twentieths of the way to getting our free Phoenix pet. My man right here, Nepal Spring, hooking me up with some eyes for the collection. Thank you very much, my man. Let's add these in real quick. We're now at 169 million. And then, of course, he gave me these jars of eyes. You know, maybe someone can figure out how many eyes are in these jars, honestly. I mean, I, I think it counts, right? That, that counts towards the eye collection. My friends, it is done, finally. This grind has been a little bit heartbreaking, gut-wrenching, emotional, and all over the place. And that's because how do you stack 100 elite clues without opening it? It was so hard. Oh my gosh, I just wanted to open these stupid things since I had like 10 of them. I don't think I've ever done a huge elite clue opening. Maybe I have, and I'm just forgetting because my brain has the memory span of 15 seconds. But 100 elite clues, and we are going to open these up and see if we can get anything juicy. I think, I think that's a pretty good send-off for the 100th episode of the collection log series we're at 33 out of 59 with 387 elite clues completed overall over the past like six or seven years of me playing this account or something crazy like that and uh we're gonna yeah we're gonna do a fourth of what i've done in the past like eight years we're just gonna open that now so uh elite clues do have a one in five chance of giving a master so we're basically just doing master clues for five plus hours <laughs> i mean seriously it's gonna be a lot of master clues but hopefully we can also get some juicy uniques uh, and there's our first master. Now, I do think that we have a pretty good chance of getting at least, I'm going to say if we get two or three collection long slots, I'll be happy. And I know that sounds pathetic, but trust me, Elite Clue unique rates are just that bad. Well, I got to say, I hate Jagex so much. How dare they release a new quest while I'm trying to open my master clues? Uh, because now I can't teleport to Fallow. I have to go get the new music from the quest, which I'm sure is fantastic. All right, I'm, I'm very excited for Path of Gluffery, but, you know, I'm trying to do Master Clues here. Unfortunately, there's our first dupe, the Arceus Scarf. Get used to it. There's going to be a lot of dupes in this opening. Hallelujah, I think we just opened five Elite Clues without a Master Clue. That's never going to happen again. Probably the only time you've ever seen it happen. I don't know if it's ever happened in human history. There's a... Oh, it's a new unique! Hey, let's go. Rune Dragon Mask. I think we're missing quite a few of the masks. Yeah, we're actually missing three other ones. I just kept getting bronze and mithril. It's so good to see a new one. Let's check it out. What does it look like? It's great, honestly. Such a great item. I think that was added with the clue scroll rework, and that has added to my sadness. Master number two down. Bring on the 20,000 more that we're going to get. Just not back-to-back, -back, please. Thank you. Let me open a couple. Let me have a little bit of thrill and excitement in my life. Maybe another unique? No. No, but another master clue. That's neat. I don't know if you can tell, but I really, really need them to pull stackable masters like yesterday because this makes opening clues so miserable. All right, it's the next day. I've just woken up, had some crescent rolls for breakfast. What a delicious, nutritious start to my day. We just finished the next master clue and we got another master clue because the pain and suffering doesn't stop. Up until this step, it has been all Fallow the Bard and Sherlock. I've gotten four Fallow steps and one Sherlock step. Now they're mastered down. I'm sure we're going to get another one in the back-to-back -back because this game is funny. Actually, we didn't, but we did get Fire Lighters, which is oh so exhilarating. Come on, let me see another unique. I don't even care if it's a dupe. Oh, a Mimic. That's spicy. I forgot these even came from Elite Clues. All right, let's gear up. Let's slay this Mimic. 17-second Mimic. The Ultor and Torva is definitely helping with the speed here and I didn't really need any of this food but it's just, it's just emergency food just in case we need it and uh yeah 29 kill count at the mimic can we get the third age ring finally no but we did get the rune crossbow so you know shout out to settled I got that for you baby 77 more to go more fire lighters another rune crossbow we're getting so lucky in this opening this is crazy how crazy is it though we've actually opened 27 elites and I think we've only seen two unique items one of which was new thankfully but yeah Two unique items in 28, 29, 30 clues. <laughs> this is painful, dude. Who made elite clues? I just want to talk to him. Like, I just want to talk. I'm not, I'm not, it's nothing nefarious. I just want to have a little chat. Another mimic before we get any other unique. So we're, we're 35 deep with just the Arceus scarf and the rune dragon mask. But we got two mimics though. So I mean, that's pretty good actually. Don't worry. I picked up the mahogany plank because I'm not a disgusting degenerate or worse. A UIM. Ugh. Anyways, let's open the Mimic. What do we get? 
Oh, baby, grimy Renar weeds. I'm actually having fun, I swear. I know I sound, I'm sounding a little doom and gloom, but this is actually really fun opening all these. That was also 30 kill count at the Mimic. I don't remember exactly what the drop rate of the Third Age ring is from it, but I'm sure we're getting close. Let me look it up right here. It's 1 in 40, or 1 in 44, depending on if it's from uh, Masters or Elite. So we're getting pretty close. Okie dokie, we're in the Farming Guild. This is where the luck happens, I'm guessing... This is where the luck happens. Finally, a new unique. Well, it's not new, but a unique that we haven't seen this opening. The Musketeer Pants. That's three uniques in just about 40 clues. I'm expecting it's going to pick up soon. Did I get a master clue and not notice it? I, I don't understand. We are... How, how many elites have we done? Like, 30 without a master? That is insane. Like, these are astronomical odds of this happening. There we go. Oh my god. Somebody go find out how many elites it took me to get that master. That is nuts. Another one bites the dust and we've got 56 more elites to go. Just something, please. I said like two or three uniques and it's not looking good. Like, oh my god. Oh my god. There's no way we're this unlucky, right? Oh, okay. There it is. I... I uh, uh, <laughs> two unique items. Two collection log slots and one clue. That is kind of ridiculous. Oh my god. And someone in my clan just got the, the Leviathan pet. Wait, did these uniques not even pop up in my clan? Oh, they pop up after you close the clue. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, Ranger gloves and the steel dragon mask. That is actually really awesome. How much are these things worth? Only 300k? It's a little grim. Are they really that bad? Yeah, they're that bad. Looking at their stats, they're pretty bad. And now we're exactly halfway through the elite opening and now we've gotten three uniques so i don't care i am not upset anymore there's a mithril dragon mask i'm not upset at all because uh even though that's a dupe i don't care because we just got a double unique from elites that's got to be one of the most incredible things i've ever seen and also i know i was complaining about uh oh whoa cut that voice crack out of the video if you leave it in you're a piece i know of i was complaining about the uh master rates but seriously what is that five master clues and 60 elites that's kind of nuts a uh, top hat that's cute. It's a very cute item. Uh, wow, man. Elite clues. You know, I didn't realize this when I'd only open a couple of them, but they're really bad. <laughs> Look at this. Two firelighter rolls, and there's a bronze dragon mask and the master clue. Why are we getting so many dragon masks? Like, we've gotten a considerable... We've gotten four out of the, what, six dragon masks in this opening already? Okay. And to this uh, pretty crazy spot to open clues. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> Peace laugh, I have nothing else left. Anyways, Elite Clue Scrolls, what could go wrong from opening these? A bucket helmet, that's a cute one. And another Mimic? Wow, that is wild, actually. We've gotten a pretty ridiculous amount of Mimics so far. Uh, okay, there's an 11 second Mimic. I dumped my Dragon Claw Specs and then I hit it twice with the Shadow. I don't, I don't really know if I'm going to be able to beat that one. <laughs> that was pretty good, that was pretty good, 11 seconds. And, and finishing fast means you're going to get something good. Wait a minute. Phrasing. Anyways, Mimic! Wines of Zami. 31 more to go. I'm so excited. I'm never stacking elite clues again, by the way. What is that? Dragon Square Shield Ornament Kit? That's cute. Oh, a Ranger's Tunic? That's cute. That's a dupe. But still, that is 3.6 mil, so I'm definitely not upset. And a Master Clue. All right. Yeah, yeah. No, just please. If I ever say that I'm stacking elite clues again, stop me. Because this is, this is such a roller coaster. I just want to get off. Fishing this angler fish right here genuinely took me like three minutes. I don't ever want to do that clue step again, Sherlock. Pretty please. 26 left to go. Will we get master clues? Yes, we will. And what's the first step? It's a good one, right? <sighs> We're on step five. Every single step has been a triple step. Somebody please deliver me from the eighth ring of hell that I've been placed in. All right, here we are at the Ferox Enclave to open the rest of my elite clues. Just on the off chance that somebody decides to kill me, that would be delightful. Here we go, 24 more elite clues to go. And uh, what could happen? Nobody knows. I mean, you could technically get third age and gilded from elite clues. Not that that's ever happened to anybody. Nobody's seen an elite clue over 100k in about four millennia. But that's okay, because we get another master clue, some summer pies, some tuna potatoes. We're eating good tonight, folks. Now, I know what you're thinking, right? I know what you're thinking. Only tw 16 elite clues left to go? How could you get anything good? Well, listen, my friend. Double dupe unique. What do you think about that, huh? Huh? That's pretty... That's pretty good. Everything's fine. Oh, my God, we got a katana. There's a katana in RuneScape. I forgot this item even existed. Throw it on, baby. Ooh, yes, we look so cool. Did we all, wait, was that another double unique clue? We got the Katana and the Musketeers to Bard as well. Wow, we're getting a lot of double unique clues. Oh, and you even get the sheath for it. Man, that's a cool... 
That's a cool little item right there. All right, we've actually gotten way more log slots than I thought we would get. So I'm ac I'm actually not complaining. I promise. This has been a fruitful opening. I just don't I just don't like having to do uh, master clues and interrupt it. I wish I could just open 100 in a row. What am I saying? Speak of the devil, master clue number 50. What? Actually, this is only number 10. This is ex insanely unlucky. And we're potentially gonna end the opening here at the loneliest bank in all of RuneScape, the Etzeteria Bank that you just literally never see anybody at. You know, you come here when you want to be left alone while you blow your molten glass or whatever two clues left last elite clue out of the 100 and it's a mimic that's actually pretty exciting okay this could be a banging way to end it ah look at that mahogany plank the last one we're gonna actually wait no we have master clues we might we might fight another mimic i don't know what i'm talking about anyways mimic number 32 what could it be yeah yeah, that's about what I expect from Mimics. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if y'all thought we were actually getting something good, but obviously that is not happening. 487 Elite Clues completed, and let's check that Elite Clue log now because it's looking juicy. 37 out of 59. I really want to get that to over 40. That would look oh so beautiful. We got an insane amount of dupes, but we also got four new items. We finished the Ranger's outfit, which is super cool. Uh, and a couple other new items, including the Rune and Steel Dragon Mask, the Katana, just looking absolutely fire. We still have a lot of the common, quote-unquote common, uniques left to go, so we still have some exciting stuff from Elites before we have to just go for the Mega Rare Tuxedo outfits, plus I don't remember if any of these ornament kits are insanely rare, but let's just assume they are. Anyways, though, a pretty successful endeavor, and now onto the Master Clues. I have 467 Master Clues. I want to get to 500 by the end of the year. We're really, really close. That should be quite easy. Do remember though that i don't turn clues in for masters so pretty much all of these are just from opening other tiers of clues maybe back in the day i turned some into masters but not for a long time so anyways let us find the master caskets we got exactly 10 we got half of the amount we should have gotten from those 100 elites but that's okay master clues are never disappointing you guys know this they're always great always amazing and filled with unique items and just so silly we love master clues oh mimic there we go we did get another mimic all right i got absolutely shredded that kill i actually got down to 20 health at one point absolutely insane but there's a 20 second mimic uh pretty spicy 33 kill count we're just inching ever so closer to that third age ring drop rate uh which doesn't matter because we're gonna get it right now oh no but we did get red fire lighters so uh I consider that a win. Three more to go. What could be lying in wait in these clues? Probably, oh, well, there's a dupe, greater demon mask. And nothing. Wow. The most exciting 10 masters I've ever seen. What uh, what number greater demon mask was that? Yeah, that was number eight. I've gotten a fair few of those over the years. So, uh, yeah, a pretty interesting clue open. A little bit depressing on the master side, but the elites went extremely well with four new uniques. So, uh, yes, we'll get to 500 elites soon. We'll get to 500 masters soon, hopefully. And we'll get to 12,500 collection log slots pretty soon. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the over 100 minutes of collection logging. Goodness, this is going to be an absolute nightmare to edit, but... I'm going to do it. I'm going to pull through it for y'all, and then my computer will probably die while rendering it. So hopefully the ad revenue from this gets me enough money for new computer parts because this bad boy has seen some stuff. Anyways, for real though, thank you all so much for supporting the series over the years. I really appreciate it. None of this would have been possible without you all. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, I want you to know that I really, really do appreciate it. On a super serious note though, if you just watched a two hour long video and didn't press like, your mama did not raise you right, and I am deeply ashamed of her. But for real though, thank you all once again. We will continue the collection logging adventures next time. I do have to say though, the next video will probably not be two hours long. I do apologize about that. You're gonna have to suffer through an average length video. Anyways, have a great day. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.